Number 55, calculate the molarity of each of the following solutions. And then we have letter C. So in this example, they told us that we have 1.49 kilograms of isopropyl alcohol, which is C3H7OH. And this is all in 2.5 liter uh, solution, right? Oh, and I was just going to say, right, the concentration of isopropyl alcohol in rubbing alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol, which you guys will be very, very, very familiar with if you guys take organic chemistry. I hope I can help you guys out. I hope we put out organic chemistry videos for you guys in sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, you'll be seeing these, you know, alcohols and specifically isopropyl alcohol in that class. But anyway, I digress. Let's do this question. We need to calculate the molarity, right? And they give us a, uh, a kilogram value and they give us a liter. The molarity formula that's coming to my mind is this one, right? I'll just put it over here. This is molarity equals the moles of the solute divided by the liters of solution. More simply, it's just capital M, right? Capital M is always molarity equals the moles divided by the liters. So that's what I'm going to put over here. Capital M equals moles divided by liters. Molarity equals moles over liters. So did they tell us if we had, you know, X amount of moles or did they tell us that we have any liters? Well, kind of, right? They didn't give me the mole value. They gave me a kilogram, but they did tell me that this was in 2.5 liters. So I know that the bottom has to be 2.5 liters or 2.50 liters. But I don't know the mole value, right? They didn't tell me this number. So I first have to convert. I have to convert the 1.49 kilograms of isopropyl alcohol, which is C3H7OH, right? And I have to convert that into moles of C3H7OH. However, there's a little catch here, right? On my tricks down here, uh, I see that I, I can go to a mole value, right? That's what I need. But in order to do that, I need to have grams of that. I don't have that. I have kilograms, right? Kg, this Kg is my initials, Christina Glazer, but it's also kilograms. Um, but we need grams, right? So what, what do you think is the first thing that I have to do? Ah, I got to go to grams of isopropyl alcohol. And then I can finally go to moles. So let's do it. That's this quick trick down here, right? We're starting at kilograms. We want to get to grams. So I'm going this way. So it's this arrow. So kilograms to grams, I just take my kilogram value and I multiply by a thousand. Alternately, you can take your decimal and move it to the right three times and just put a zero for placeholders here. So this 1.49 times a thousand is uh, 1,490 grams. So they're equivalent. So I either have 1.49 kilograms or I have 1,490 grams of this isopropyl alcohol. So one step done. Now we just have to find out, well, I have this amount of grams. How many moles do I have? Now we're doing this little trick over here. I'm starting with grams. I got to get to moles. All I have to do, and I label it as X, right? X means it could be any element or compound. It just has to be the same compound or element on both sides. And that's what we're doing here, right? I have grams of isopropyl alcohol and grams of isopropyl alcohol. So I just take the gram value. I'm going this way. So I'm using this arrow. So all I do is I take the grams and divide by the molecular weight, the MW. Well, it, they didn't tell us what that was. Well, yeah, they, they make you work for it, right? We have to find that out on the periodic table, on the PT. But molecular weight is the same thing as molar mass, right? All you got to do is just add up the total of what these guys are, right? Now, just remember, for doing mass purposes, it's much easier to group together all of your like elements, so I can either say this as C3H7OH, but 
I could just make it easier for myself and say that this is C3H8O, right? If I say I have seven hydrogen and I have one, I'm just adding them together to make it eight. So um, whichever, whichever way is easier. Now I just have to get the molecular weight of that. So C3H8O. So I'm just going to go to the periodic table. I'm going to calculate what three carbons would be, eight hydrogens, and one oxygen. So you get out your periodic table, and let's see if we have roughly the same answer. I'm going to get the exact answer, uh, but, we sh but we should come very, very, very close. And I have one oxygen, so 16. Okay, so I have a weight, a molar mass of isopropyl alcohol of 60.094 grams per mole. Cool. So I'm just going to take those grams, divide it by that molecular weight, and I got the moles. So we have 1,490 grams divided by the molecular weight, 60.094 gram per mole. And as you can see, the unit of grams cancel out, and I'm left with the mole. So that's why this little trick works. So let's see, what's 1490? 1,490 grams divided by 60.094. I get, uh, we need three sig figs, so 24.8. 24.8 moles, and that's of the isopropyl alcohol. So now I found out what this number was, 24.8. Finally, we can go back to the question and say, we can find out the molarity, right? Molarity now is taking those two numbers. The moles that we found out, 24.8, and dividing it by the liters, which they told us, 2.50. The units, mole and liter, do not cancel because they're not the same. So the units for molarity is moles over liters. So 24.8 divided by 2.5, I get 9.5. 9.2. You could do capital M. That's an acceptable unit for molarity, or just like I said before, the actual unit of molarity is mole over liter. And that's it. So this is pretty concentrated. It's a pretty high number. I would say like anything maybe above like three or four would be considered getting into the concentrated area, but don't quote me on that. So yeah, this is pretty good. Guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love to talk to you guys. Love to hear from you guys and, you know, know how you guys are doing in your classes. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got for you. All right. So hang tight. We got another molarity question coming your way. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.